So we wanted to demonstrate a little bit more about how our winch gearbox worked from the most recent Robot and 3-Day Challenge. We start with a lunchbox assembly, a general lunchbox assembly with a sim motor driving the first 12 tooth sim pinion gear. That's driving a 50 tooth gear and then a 28 tooth cluster gear all on the 3 8 inch hex shaft. And that's driving a 48 tooth shifter gear, dog shifter gear. The dog gear is driving a shifter shaft. And then inside on the cluster gear, we also have a 3 8 inch ratcheting wrench. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the system. We're going to start with the shifter block and shifter shaft assembly. This is the shaft that will actually drive the interior dog gear on the shaft. When this is pushed in, the shaft will disengage from the gear and when it is brought back inside the gear, it will engage with the shaft driving the winch down. On the shifter block, you can see that we actually have a spring installed. This spring keeps the dog engaged with the gear, spinning the shaft when there's no pneumatic pressure engaged. So at all times, until the pneumatic piston releases the dog from the gear, this is a driven assembly. The pneumatic piston would force in the shifter block and disengage to a neutral position, allowing the shaft to spin freely from the gear. The shaft is coupled to the dog via a 2.5 millimeter screw. Here you can see that dog gear shifting in and out and engaging with the shifter gears. The dog is cut smaller than the window on the shifter gear. This allows the, gear, the dog to engage with the gear, sliding in with some sl slop and spinning until it engages with the window. Here you can see how as the dog spins, the gear will spin alongside it. There is some constraint issues in this assembly, but these two would usually spin as a coupled joint. So you can see that we've actually placed two spacers on this shaft to try to make sure that the spacing is appropriate. This could be optimized even more with a custom made spacer. We've chosen to design this entire gearbox around off the shelf parts. The shaft is the only part right now that is not currently off the shelf, but Andy Mark will actually begin carrying this, this next week. Again, we have these two identical spacers on the cluster shaft. This spacing is such that the ratcheting wrench fits adequately inside on the cluster shaft. The ratcheting wrench may actually vary somewhat in dimensions. This is just a mock-up that we threw in there based off of our memory of the dimensions from the ratcheting wrench. However, this spacing may change ever so slightly and should not, and should not significantly affect the performance of your gearbox. You can see that we actually left the ratcheting wrench fully assembled without any modifications to it. This was because it fit nicely underneath the spacing of our shaft. This may change based on your final assembly and you may want to pin the wrench or come up with some other containment method. Remember, it only has to resist force in one direction, so this actually works out pretty well. We ended up just zip tying it there in place to make sure that it didn't slip or do anything funky in any other operation. Now taking a look at the rest of the construction of the gearbox, we have a traditional sim motor plate and a bearing block adjacent. Notice that the 632 screws, there's only two in the first bearing block. This is a traditional lunchbox assembly. All of their lunchbox plates are installed with their four 632 screws. And the other unique assembly is that for the shifter shaft, instead of using a custom shifter block, we've actually chosen to use a bearing block in which we've drilled out clearance holes such that the shifter block fits inside. This block should be fine for you to use uh, in this configuration. You will just need to drill out the 632 tabs for 632 clearance holes they will clamp the two blocks together adequately. The driven shaft in this assembly is a half inch keyed shaft and should be able to fit most design configurations. So this concludes our tutorial on our one way quick release winch gearbox. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more like it, go ahead and comment below or give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see anything specific, let us know what you wanna see. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.